Religion, the shaping of modern ethics. Much of what we understand and experience today, we do so through the lens of our philosophy. Much of this philosophy is a Judeo-Christian philosophy, which we have inherited from the Bible. Even if we're a-religious, the British or on a larger scale westernised culture shapes our perspective. It teaches us the difference between right and wrong, faith in marriage, the consequence of doing wrong, etc. Ancient Egypt also had a guiding philosophy in their religion. This religion is called Ma'at. We will learn how Ma'at also potentially laid the foundations for later Abrahamic religions. For example, Amen, which many religions commonly use to end their prayers, may have come from Amun, the name of the god of the sun in ancient Egyptian religions. We previously covered Maslow's hierarchy of needs because the ancient Egyptians had organised themselves into a civilization of great wealth and stability. They had the leisure of exploring their meaning for their existence. And in exploring their existence, we not only see the foundations for many of their religions, but also for the foundation of modern psychotherapy. Ancient Egypt inspired Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud due to the Egyptians' use of myths to explore human experience. Ma'at. This chapter draws reference from the following books. Ma'at, The Moral Ideal in Ancient Egypt by Maluna Karenga, When We Ruled by Robin Walker, Maps of Meaning by Jordan Peterson, Memories, Dreams and Reflections by Carl Jung, and The Origins and History of Consciousness by Eric Newman, and also Steve Peters' The Chimp Paradox. Now, we have to understand that there is a very deep need to understand our human nature. Psychiatrist Dr. Steve Peters created a fantastic metaphor for this, the chimp paradox. As human beings, we have the unique ability to see the workings of our own mind, much like the captain of a ship can see the coordinated efforts of the crew and the ship. We can see our emotions throughout. Or sorry, sorry, we can see our emotions and thought processes, decisions, and predict alternate outcomes in intricate detail. Because of the primitive urges we have inherited from our primate relatives, such as chimpanzees, gorillas, etc., we are faced with a dilemma. We see these primitive urges to hurt, to steal, to love, help, dominate, manipulate, etc., but these are chaotic. The ancient Egyptians created an ethical code and associated myths to control the chaos which exists within our own minds. Now, to the ancient Egyptians, Ma'at was good, which brought order to the chaos. And it was every Egyptian's responsibility to bring order, aka Ma'at, and to banish evil, which was known as Isfet. But this balance was the responsibility of one person more than any other, the Pharaoh. This philosophy led ancient Egyptians to having a very protective approach to the poor, the vulnerable and to the weak. It was the responsibility for Egyptians to create heaven on earth. It was a proactive religion, inspiring action. Much like Christians, Egyptians believed that we were made in the image of the creator and they therefore must create, become knowledgeable, i.e. Uh, all-knowing, and also all-powerful. This may be contrasted to other religious practices which encourage pacificity i.e. pray and be good and you'll be rewarded in the afterlife. This was uh, different to what the ancient Egyptians believed in. The author Maluna Karenga quotes, do not touch those who are with the gods. He interprets this as a warning to followers of Ma'at against bothering those with mental health issues. Sheikh Anta Diop also mentions ancient Egyptians considering land, shelter and enough food as their birthright. The strength of one who resembles God saves the weak from oppression. This was quoted by um, um, Amenemov. The ancient Egyptians displayed this chaos in their origin story, which describes the origin of the universe. 
Many similarities can be seen between ancient Egyptian creative myths and others such as those in the Abrahamic religions. For example, the power of spoken word is a theme. Spoken word organises the chaos. In chronological order, ancient Egyptian mythology sees Atum, the first god, um, and as he spat or spoke Shu and Tefnut into the world after emerging himself from the primordial ocean. In the Abrahamic religions, um, God on Ju in Judaism and Christianity and Islam says, let there be light. In Sikhi, by his command, souls come into being. By his command, glory and greatness are obtained. That's what it says in the Guru Granth, if I'm not mistaken. Now, my task to you in the pyramid texts of ancient Egyptian religions, Atom speaks into the primordial waters creating gods which separate the earth from the sky. In the Bible, the Torah and the Quran, God does the same thing by creating a void between the earth and the sky. Why do you think creationist stories are so similar to each other despite coming from different religions? Why are there so many similarities in the myths which different religions um, tell us? So what I want you to do is get together as a group under the command and the guidance of your teacher start to try and think about and put to paper brainstorm why you feel or why you think there are so many similarities between different religions come up with your justification for what you think and uh, discuss as a group and then whenever you're ready uh, feel free to to press play or go on to the the next slide after you've conversed and discussed this topic